All right, so this is a pretty typical 3030 brake chamber. Um, there are a couple different versions of this, and they're pretty easy to tell apart if you pay attention to what you're looking at. Uh, they make a standard stroke and a long stroke. The standard stroke are typically like this one, and where the air fitting would screw into it, it is round. Typically, if it's a long stroke, this part would be square. You still have round threads, of course, in the center, but the actual casting would be uh, squared off. And the reason this is called a 30-30 chamber, as opposed to just a 30 chamber, is it's divided into two different chambers. One chamber is for the spring brake, which is housed inside this area here. If you notice, it's, it's not able to be taken apart, but this one is. So the spring brake is in here. There's this, there's this large spring that with the absence of air, it pulls the brakes to set the parking brakes. So when you're putting, pushing in on your valve on the dash, you're putting air against this diaphragm that's in here and you're compressing that spring. When you compress that spring, then it pulls that rod in and releases the brakes. When it releases the brakes, this shaft is separated from that spring pressure. So when you apply the brakes, then it can push that shaft this way. Does that make sense? I hope so. Anyways, what happened to this one is the diaphragm that's in between here that seals the air on this chamber, it has failed and it's leaking air through the holes. A lot of times guys will just take this apart, take these two clamps apart, change the diaphragm, put it back together. Um, he chose to just go ahead. Well, actually, when he called me, he told me it was rusted out. So I assumed it, it was a bad chamber. So he got the whole chamber. We're just going to go ahead and change it out. It's not a big deal. It won't take long. It takes a little longer than just changing that diaphragm inside, but not a lot. It doesn't take a lot of tools either. You need 15 16 wrench for these, 15 16 for here. You need whatever wrench for the fittings here. And we got to change a clevis and cut the rod off. Sounds like a lot, but it's really not. So when, the, when this diaphragm went bad, they put vice grips on the line that supplies the air supply air pressure to that chamber to release the brakes. Because otherwise, if it can't hold air pressure, then the spring pushes against it and locks up that wheel. So by doing this, it was able to, to roll and get it here. So what we need to do is take the lines out, disconnect the, the slack adjuster, the fork here and the slack adjuster. After we get that apart, we can take these off. Always chalk the wheels. You don't want this thing to roll over on you. That's for sure. So let me get this stuff apart. So I need to pull the clevis pins out of this slack adjuster and this fork. But before I do that, I want to crack this jam nut loose. Because if I don't, it's a lot more difficult later. And these got cotter pins on the other side. Okay, so we're removing the two airlines. Now we got to take the fittings out. And I'm doing this right here because it is far easier take this stuff apart while it's on here than it is trying to hold it while it's loose. <clears throat> and then we'll clean the fittings up. falling on me okay now that's ready to go just throw this outside and we'll go measure this when i'm down here doing a repair i always look at everything just give it a look over and see if there's anything of concern like that like an axle that's cracked that is a bad axle housing and one of these days, that's going to have to be taken apart and cleaned. You see it's starting to get a little worse. It's not a wheel seal. The axle housing itself is probably cracked like the Peterbilt was. But we'll get a good look at it. I like to lay my hands on anything I can and, you know, inspect and look and touch and feel just to be safe. Because, you know, this is how you, 
this is how you catch things so you don't have breakdowns. You know, you're constantly looking and inspecting things. So uh, I'm going to look at some stuff, but we'll get that changed out real quick. I have a long socket I could use this on, use on this, I should say. But it's much easier to see it, see it get longer if I do it by hand. This is a spring acting upon that rod to push it forward. We're just releasing, we are uncompressing that spring. Okay, that's out. And then take the caging bolt out. So that's the caging bolt. It goes inside there into a slot and then turns and locks in. And then it allows you to tighten up on it and this will this will push on the cast part inside there and then the ears will let you pull. So now we got that out. Now what we gotta do is take this off. Which <clears throat> if you look at this right here, you see how far that is past. Sometimes that will interfere with the uh, slack adjuster, so we'll probably make it about a quarter inch shorter than that. It's like this jam that's almost at the threads. But this distance from here to here may be different to where the threads start. I'm going to tell you that came off easy because it had never seized on it. So we can't use this fork. This fork is intended for manual slack adjusters. This one's meant for automatic. It's got the pin, so as you apply, that plunger works and adjusts it. So, next thing we do is head in the shop. We're gonna cut the measure and cut the length. So what we'll do is we'll take this protective rod and cover off, and we have to run this all the way down because we want this down below where we're gonna cut because we're gonna use it to clean the threads. So that's about four inches right there, and that's, it's about four inches, but we're going to shorten it because I don't want that rod interfering with that slack adjuster. I don't think it was, but it's not going to hurt to make it a little bit shorter. So we're going to go three and three quarters. I still get crap about the the guards and how these wheels are just wheels of death. <laughs> well, they are in the wrong hands. I mean, if you use that thing going in the wrong direction, and if you don't understand what I'm talking about, yeah, you're you need to have a guard. Run this over the threads. I should clean them up. Make it easy to thread the, the fork back on. Did you bring the fork? Um, yeah, it's up there on the saw. Yeah, there you go. There that is. Comes off nicely. And restarts just as nice. So now we'll set the jam nut. Where it needs to go, and then we'll talk about orientation. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's the. Uh oh. That's the wrong can. That one's about empty. You better go find the other one. Yeah. So we need to get the fittings orientated the same, and we have this about level, and and that's about level right here. We also want to be mindful of these clamps, or that they're not going to be in the way and hit the tire. 
this mounts this way so this clamp right here it's it's plenty fine it won't interfere and the way that we turn this is we just put air pressure I put about 60 pounds of air pressure because that's all it takes to overcome this parking brake 60 70 pounds uh, put air into that chamber it compresses the spring and then allows us to change this as we need and then when we're done all we have to do is remove the air and now we are ready to put it on I'm going to remove the slack adjuster away make things a little simpler got the side cuts here under the locking pin for the adjuster without pulling this pin out it will not move out it will not move away it'll only move if you look here I let that in it locks in it won't move it'll only let you adjust them tighter so you have to take this get underneath there they make a tool for it but I don't buy tools that aren't necessary if you can get away with it with something else then I don't see the need for the tool unless it saves time and I don't think it saves that much time for the cost all right so now easier to move this in and put our pins in place. Anytime the line's been crossed with vice grips you can't use it because it will collapse. So I think it's too short. I'll have to get another one. I'll have to replace that. It creates a spot in there that when you go to tighten it it will twist and kink it. So, okay we'll take that in the shop and find us another piece and some new ferrules compression fittings. Oh, while I'm here, one thing I never do, I never, ever leave a caging bolt in these things. A lot of guys do, but I don't because by the time you actually go to use them, what 90% of the time what happens is you got to pull these out, they're stuck or they're corroded so badly that you couldn't use them even if you tried. So I just take them out and put them in the truck which is where this one was when they went to go do this and it was usable so let's go get us another line all right so we adjust the brakes we have the parking brakes released the spring brakes are released right now and then we take and turn turn the brakes in all the way until they're tight now in the summertime he likes them back off about a quarter of a turn in the winter he likes a half a turn I did that one now I get it back there so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust these last two and then uh, I'll do that back here looking at stuff and this is a very good example of why you inspect everything it's coming loose that tire needs replaced and it's wearing goofy too so when they start wearing goofy and you see this it's not long for this world that that tread could be coming loose from the casing itself and this is what I was talking about that axle it's probably gonna crack it's leaking you see it right there so it's leaking on the top side so the suspension has to come loose and fix it or replace the housing one or the other So for those of you that would like to know how this brake chamber works and what that screen looks like, we're going to open it up. Don't try this at home. This is what you're going to call, what you're going to say is dangerous.
All right, what we're going to do is cut the spring just to make it easier to show you what it is. So this is a spring that's in there. As you can see, it's about the size and diameter of what might be on a mid-sized car or a light truck on the front end or the rear end. And uh, you can see it was busted. So when these break, that means that the spring brake doesn't hold real well. And when it breaks, it has the ability to puncture the diaphragm. <clears throat> so this part's easily right in like that and it, the spring would be on this side and if all it takes is this to move and you can see how it punctured a hole right in the diaphragm lost all the air so that was the failure with it this is why you don't take the back side of this apart see how this one has a clamp it's it'll be taken apart and this is not this is this is a form steel one piece no bolts no nothing so there you go don't take them apart you hurt yourself